Hey guys, Chelsea here from Making Manzanita and today we are going to be making polymer clay decorative knots. So you may have seen these for sale at many high end retailers over the last couple of years. They've become really popular and I absolutely love the look. So I'm really excited to be able to show you how to make them yourself today. And it's super easy. The only, I'm gonna walk you through some of the supplies here as we get started. So this is really the only thing that I had to go out and buy was the actual clay. And I am using Original Sculpty brand. And this came in a two pack on Amazon and it was fairly inexpensive. Um, the big thing to note here is that this is polymer clay and not air dry clay. So there's two different types of clay that you can choose to work with when you are doing DIY clay projects and polymer is the type that we are using today. And then there's also air dry. So polymer needs to be baked in the oven in order to cure and then air dry simply dries in the air. Um, so those are the two types of clay you can choose to work with. And here are the other supplies that you'll need. I would recommend grabbing some rubbing alcohol and some artist paint brushes. This will help smooth out any fingerprints or creases that we get in the clay and you can apply this you can use this before or after baking so i'm going to try to get them as smooth as i possibly can and then i will use some rubbing alcohol to smooth them in further and then you can also use sandpaper after it has been baked and if there are any other marks or imperfections that you want to get out you're also going to want to have just a kitchen knife to cut the ends nice and straight and then lastly you will want some parchment paper and a cookie, like a baking sheet, um, to bake the items in. And then of course you'll need your oven. So before we get started, I wanted to show you kind of some of the planning that I did. I looked online at some inspiration and then I, to test out my knot patterns, I grabbed some yarn, I'll kind of show this to you, from just my craft pile. And I started experimenting with some of the knots just so I could be comfortable with what I was planning to do before I got all of my supplies out. So you can see here, this is, um, here's the regular one. This is just a simple overhand knot um, and I just didn't pull it tight. So that's that one. This again is the same type of knot. I'm using the same overhand knot pattern for all of them just to keep it really simple. Um, but this is the same type of knot, but it adds a little more interest because I used a longer piece of string and then just uh, folded it in half before starting. So that one's really fun. And then this one is a little hard to tell here with the yarn, but it's the same knot pattern, but I used one big loop and I connected the end before I knotted it. So both ends will be connected just like that. And the color, I am just using a plain white. There are tons of different colors, so you can get super creative with this. But I think for one of them, what I'm gonna do is just add a speckled pattern to do this. And I've seen this done a couple different ways and it's just using items that should already be in your kitchen. So I'm going to try pepper and adding some pepper to the clay and just mixing it up. And then I've also seen the same thing done with coffee grounds. So that's two kind of creative ways that you can add a little visual interest uh, to your clay for creating. All right, let's get started. So I started the process by opening up the package and using about a quarter of the clay that comes in the package and started the kneading process, just using my hands to start working the clay. All right, so I have been working it for now a couple of minutes just with my hands and it's starting to soften up to where I think I can roll it. So the instructions just say that you just need to knead the clay like you would um, Play-Doh, really, um, with your hands until it's nice and soft. And the warmer it gets, the softer it's gonna be. So if you end up um, getting to a point where it starts sticking to your work surface or your hands, or it's getting too soft, that means it needs to cool down. So a few things you can do is uh, go wash your hands in nice cold water, change the temperature of the room if possible, put a fan on or a cooler on it, um, but I am working now here in the winter and I'm working on a cold granite surface. So that's helping. Um, but again, if it starts getting too sticky, I will just wash my hands in some nice cold water. 
So I've been, like I said, I've been working this for a couple of minutes. It's getting to the point where it's soft enough to me to mold, but it's not um, so soft that it's starting to stick. So um, I think this is enough to do one knot. Um, actually, I think I may add some more because I wanted them to be kind of thick and this isn't enough for me to knot it uh, in the way that I wanted to. So I'm gonna make a little more to add to this. I'm just going to take the other half that I had cut. So I'm using one half of the package and this package is 1.7 pounds, 75 pounds. So again, this is pretty hard when I get it right out of the package. It does take a couple minutes of kneading to get it nice and soft. So next, I just continued kneading the new clay that I had just taken out of the package, and this takes about two or three minutes to get it soft and malleable to where you can work it together. And then I combined the two, and again, this was about half of the package, and this is for my first knot. So once you get it all combined, you can start rolling it out and you just roll it out. Make sure your surface is really clean. You can see here I am starting to pick out some little pieces uh, from the yarn actually that I had out that got stuck to the clay, unfortunately. So be sure you have a nice clean surface to work with and then just start rolling it out. Here I am trying that rubbing alcohol method. You can see there's a couple fingernail marks that I accidentally put into it and so I'm trying this rubbing alcohol method and to be honest it didn't work as great as I was hoping it did I was just putting it on straight with a paintbrush it did work a little better if I was using my uh, hands to kind of press it together so I ended up starting over because the fingernail marks were really bugging me um, and I just pushed it all together and then rolled it out a second time and I was a little more careful with my fingernails All right, here we are with attempt number three. The first time I was picking at all the yarn to try to get it nice and clean. Then I decided to embrace it because I was getting a bunch of um, marks in it that were hard to smooth out. Then I tried again and realized I was still getting a little marks in it and I couldn't figure out why. Lo and behold, it was because I was wearing a ring. I had my wedding ring on. So I finally figured that out. So now I am ring free. I'm embracing the little bits of um, yarn that are in here and we're gonna try this again. <laughs> so on my first attempt, I folded it in half as shown and then tried to do the knot and I realized it wasn't quite long enough to do the knot I had planned. So I unrolled it again, smoothed it out and measured just so I could be sure to tell you exactly the size I was using. So it is about 50 inches long and three quarter inches wide instead of one inch. We'll have a little more length to work with for the knot. I'll back up the camera here a little bit. So I backed up the camera a tad. I have my 50 inch piece folded in half and I'm gonna go ahead and attempt the knot again. Trying to get it kind of as even as possible here. And then bring the pieces together. And do a simple overhand knot. The key here is to don't let the pieces stick together too much. Um, I kind of like the way that that's looking. It has an extra fold in it here that you probably can't tell from this angle, but I kind of like it. Um, so I think I'm just gonna leave it. There are some little imperfections I can see already that I'm gonna try to quickly get out with the rubbing alcohol method, just brushing a little on there and smoothing it with my finger. I'm not sure that that's gonna work. Some of these imperfections may just need to come out afterwards when I, uh, after I bake it, I can sand it. Um, so I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing for most of these, but I do see just like some small dents and things that I will try my best to smooth out. This rubbing alcohol method, to be honest, it doesn't work super great. I wish, I wish it was working a little better. 
It does seem to work if I brush the rubbing alcohol on and then like kind of let it sit for a second and then come back. It's almost like it's been worked into the clay. So you just, just do your best and realize that it's not gonna be perfect. So if you're a perfectionist, it's probably not a good idea. Look, DIY project for you because it's not gonna be like absolutely perfect, but I think that's looking really good. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut um, the ends nice and straight. And I'm gonna start way out and then work my way closer to the knot just to kind of see where I want them to be. Kind of want a little more movement there, so. So, you can see it kind of like pushed some of the clay. So I want it to be a nice straight. Maybe I should have done this part before I knotted it up. And you know what, I can always, um, actually I think it should be like this so the angle is correct here. Um, there we go. So they kind of came apart there, which actually gives me a chance to just line that up if I want. And I really like the way that looks. It's super fun. Um, so I'm just gonna take these little pieces, I can use these again. Um, but I'm going to get it moved on to some parchment paper and put on my baking sheet and then I'll work on the other ones. So then I placed the pa parchment paper on my baking sheet and added it on and moved on to knot number two. Again, I took about a quarter of the package of clay, wiped down my surface really well to make sure it was nice and clean because anything on your surface will get stuck to the clay. I kneaded it together and then rolled it out to a length that I was happy with. And for this knot, I decided to go with a loop uh, to start with. So I cut the ends really straight, pressed them together, just smoothed it with my hand to try to get rid of the mark there. And so I was starting with a circle. Uh, I put it into an oval shape there and then worked out any of the imperfections that I could. And again, realizing that this is not gonna be perfect, there will be some imperfections for this project. Then I simply just looped it in a knot, uh, again, just an overhead knot, and pulled it as tight as I wanted it to get the look I was going for, and got some of the imperfections out using, again, that rubbing alcohol method and just smoothing it with my finger before finishing it up. Then it was time to move on to knot number three, and this is the last one that I was attempting. So again, I got the rest of my clay out and I kneaded it together for a few minutes until it was workable. And for this one, I um, am going with that pepper method. So we got it all flattened out. And then again, I'm just taking just regular kitchen pepper from my kitchen and shaking it onto the clay to get sort of a speckled texture. And it kind of ended up almost looking like limestone once I got it all worked in or sand. And it ended up being really cool. I liked this one probably the best. Um, so definitely recommend this method. And again, it was really easy just to mix that pepper right into the clay and it sticks to the clay as you start to work with it. And then I just rolled out the clay as I had done for the other two knots. All right, so I've got my piece all ready to go. I cut off the ends so they're nice and straight. I just used a kitchen knife. And now I'm gonna do the knot. And I've kind of played around with this one on a few of the other tries and I didn't love it. So I may go in a different direction, but I'm just kind of knotting it up, like kind of like a pretzel. Um, and that's why I didn't like the other ones is because I thought it looked too pretzel-ish. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any way that we can make it look less pretzel-ish. Maybe if I take the ends, yeah. and the more you mess with it, the more fingernail marks and imperfections you're going to get. Just a warning. Um, let me just make a small knot for this one. 
and then just cut off the extras here. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna get this knot a little bit tighter. And this is just the pretzel knot, like an overhead knot, an overhand knot. And then any imperfections or fingernail marks that you make, you can kind of buff out. Oh, dang it, that was a big one. You can kind of buff out, and then once you have it baked, after you're done, you can also sand it. So, um, but you can kind of see how that's looking. Um, so I'm getting it kind of tight together. And I definitely can tell already that I love this pepper method. The imperfections stand out a little less than the other one. Okay, so I'm gonna, oops. Definitely next time I do this, I'm going to cut my nails really short before and because anytime you touch it with your nail, it makes a mark. My nails aren't super long, but long enough to make a mark. Um, it's just kind of annoying. So I kind of like that. This is going to be the smallest of my two. I wish I could get it a little tighter. I'm starting to make fingernail mark or fingerprints in it now the more I mess with it. Here we kind of go. Okay, so I want each, I want this front piece to come all the way down and sit on the surface like that. And then I want this one kind of the same. So there's that. I think I'm just gonna go with this smaller one for this one and then let's do something else with these. I started by setting my oven to 275. I ended up making a little rainbow and a candy cane with the extra and then I put them in the oven and left them for one hour, which was recommended by the instructions on my box of clay. So here is what they look like out of the oven and one thing I didn't notice until they were all done um, baking was that there was something in the bottom of my oven that was smoking almost the entire time and I didn't realize it until that hour had passed and I opened it up and there was smoke coming out. So because of that, the smoke kind of changed the coloring of the pieces. You can see here that they are a little more tan than they are white. And I actually kind of love it. Um, so I'm not gonna worry about the color, but it did change slightly just because of that. Um, you can also see here, there are just some particles like I had mentioned earlier that got kind of stuck in the clay. Again, not too worried about it, unless you're looking really closely, you don't notice it. And then the other thing that I noticed is a lot of the imperfections uh, kind of worked, their, worked themselves out while it was baking. So. Um, I'm only going to take sandpaper to just a couple spots and not worry about it, but I love how they turned out. All right, so I just tried to do a little bit of sanding on some of these pieces and I was using just 220 sandpaper and I did it a little bit on the edges where I had some pieces where the knife didn't go through cleanly and that worked out great. But then when I started getting it on the actual knot, you can see kind of right here, it started making some scratches and uh, that was the opposite look I was going for. So possibly if you were using a finer grit sandpaper, it would work good. But because these small imperfections are not bothering me a lot, I'm going to simply move on. Um, again, they're gonna be used as like paperweights and on top of books for shelf decor. So these small little imperfections are not that big of a deal for me. Um, but if you are gonna sand your pieces afterwards, I would recommend something more fine than a 250 grit sandpaper to avoid getting some scratches. All right, let's get these styled. First one I added to this stack of books in our hallway on top of a cabinet and I think it looks great. It's the perfect little added touch to the stack of books and that's honestly probably the best way to use these in your house. I also added the larger one to our coffee table, again, on a stack of books. And I love how this one turned out. It is a little larger than the other ones, but it's a little more dramatic, which I love. And here's the one with the pepper added. I really love the texture of this one and the coloring. I think that pepper really added a lot and it looks great just sitting on our living room shelves here in the living room. That's another great way to use this. And lastly, another way to use your clay knots is just on a small decorative tray. 
think that adds a lot too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was definitely trial and error the first time we've ever worked with polymer clay. So thanks for hanging with us. I'm happy that I was able to share all of the things that we learned along the way so that you can take these in account when you make your own decorative knots. If you have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And then while you're here, I would love it if you would subscribe to our channel. We share weekly DIY crafts and home renovating tutorials. And then check out this video next. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.